Hey YouTube, it's Ben here, and um, a quick update on uh, how things are going here, and uh, some advice to anyone who's uh, transferring fish to a um, from one tank to another. So uh, I hope you find this helpful, and uh, as always, I hope you learn from uh, from my mistakes. All right. Thanks for coming along on the journey, and uh, let's get started. As you can see, the tank is fully functioning, and the fish are transferred over. But there are two points that I want to uh, stress. One is that when transferring fish to a new tank, no matter how perfect you get the parameters, there's going to be some stress on the fish. And this uh, showed up in my tank with um, a very small outbreak of ick and um, fortunately I have some uh, clown uh, loaches in here some clown you can see the clowns back here there's one of them and uh, being a scaleless type fish they show things like ick very quickly and so I was able to immediately raise the temperature of the tank and treat it with some ick, some uh, cordon or cordon ick attack, which was recommended or suggested to me a while back when I encountered some ick before uh, by IFG, Evan Alexander, and it worked very, very well. So I believe I was able to contain it completely and uh, arrested it. No other fish is showing any signs. It was only on one of the clowns and the other two clowns uh, didn't show any signs of it and none of the other fish have shown any but I attribute that to the stress of moving from one tank to another and uh, even though I've been using the same water and, and uh, you know from the same water source and I use some of the bacteria from the prior tank to seed the uh, this tank and start bacteria going in this tank there's still going to be some differences Certainly a new environment is going to be stressful <clears throat> and also you're going to have the stress of uh, perhaps a, a slight difference in pH, things of that nature. So there's going to be a little bit of stress in coming over and sometimes that can show up in, uh, in disease. Another thing that happened that uh, you should be aware of when transferring fish from one tank to another is I had a uh, change in hierarchy or pecking order in the tank and by that what I mean is um, I brought over the fish in waves and I brought over a subdominant a subdominant uh, flame tail this fellow right here and he uh, he sort of established himself in the tank and when I brought over what I considered to be my better flame tail, he proceeded to kill him. And he killed him overnight. If I had noticed the, uh, the aggression, I would have removed him and, uh, and allowed my other uh, flame tail to stay in this tank because that was my, my preferred flame tail. So be aware that when you transfer fish from one tank to another, there's going to be a change in, in um, sometimes in hierarchy and pecking order and that can result in a casualty. So, a couple tips for you. I know that as uh, African cichlid keepers, we're uh, notorious for constantly uh, upgrading and moving our fish to bigger tanks as the fish grow or as our uh, stock grows. So uh, just be aware that uh, there are some uh, pitfalls to, uh, to transferring no matter how careful you are and how well you did everything. But in the end, as you can see, it's very worth it. I'm enjoying this tank quite a bit. The Anubias have, uh, have done very, very well. And uh, you know they're doing well with the amount of light that they're getting. Even though while I was treating for ick, I was uh, keeping the lights off for a good amount of the day. Once heard that light actually helps ick to uh, to duplicate itself so I was keeping the lights off but the plants are still doing very very well so Anubias don't seem to need as much light maybe as most plants and as as I've mentioned before the cichlids seem to ignore 
the Anubius. They don't like the way it tastes. There's the uh, male Bucanono. Picked up from Nick Hernandez. And the Otter Point is doing very well. It's my Bicolor 500. And that Electric Blue is looking great. A little cameo by the OB who tends to be a little shy when I'm when I'm filming. And of course the Intermediates looking great as usual. Let's take a look at the uh, Hap Tank. Here's the uh, Hap Nursery. Eventually they'll be part of a hashtag Hap Nation. But for right now they're just uh, they're just Hap Nursery. All the Haps are doing well. You can see the uh, that Taiwan Reef is uh, amazing for being such a small fish. <clears throat> Living Stone Eye, the Fusco, the uh, Linny, one of my favorites there, the Linny, especially that shape of face. And uh, my little Venusis. You know, they're all doing well, and uh, some are growing faster than the others. They're all showing um, some of their signs, some of their uh, some of their adult predator behavior. This uh, Fusochromus, the um, Malawi hawk here, he's just hilarious to watch because he hangs over other fish and then he turns sideways and looks at them. But there he goes. He looks at them uh, sideways, like so he looks down on a fish with one eye and then he comes down and, uh, and goes into his uh, attack mode, which is kind of funny. There's no one in the tank that'll fit in his mouth, but he still goes through his, uh, there he goes, goes through his routine. Actually a lot of fun to watch. And I'm, enjoy I'm enjoy enjoying these guys quite a bit. And uh, even my little uh, three for $10 Venusis, who are uh, probably the smallest fish in the tank. That will not be long. I mean, the Venusas grow like crazy, as you know. I left this guy here since he does such a good job with the algae, and he's going to keep these uh, these wonder stones. These are called wonder stones. These are real rocks called wonder stones, and uh, you know I want him to to uh, stay in the tank and keep those clean. I bought those wonder stones originally for the 135, but I didn't like the way they looked in there, so I brought them into the uh, into the 60. Let me know what you think about them in this tank. And because uh, I think that's where I'm going to leave them. Okay, so uh, that's, that's it for the update. And I hope that helps. Uh, something to keep in mind when you're transferring fish from one tank to another. It uh, seems pretty simple on the surface, especially if you take the right steps and cycle your tank. Um, when I cycled the 135, I used, um, I rinsed out sponges from the two sun suns I have on this tank into the 135. I also used some live bacteria in a bottle from, uh, from Tetra. I also used uh, Stability from Seachem um, after, li <clears throat> after listening to a, uh, a talk by uh, Jay Wilson. I use the uh, stability product from uh, from Seachem, and of course I use the uh, sponges from the older established filters, which of course goes back to John Hudson and KG Tropicals in some of his uh, advice given way back when on how to cycle a tank and the best way to cycle a tank. He's real big on using that, that method. So that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. You're certainly appreciated, and uh, and uh, thank you for hanging in there with me throughout this journey. And uh, I'm sure we'll enjoy watching these guys grow up, and eventually end up in that 135, and maybe a 220 down the road. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> There's the Fusco. Really looking forward to that guy, putting on some size and color. All right, that's it for now. Thank you so much.